Uh, hello everyone, uh, my name is Daniel Guys. I'm the creative and technical director here at ED Films. Um, today we're switching gears all over again um, to do a work on another painting <laughs> because we're flying all over the place. Today we're going to be t using more of the store brushes. So yesterday we were playing with this painting and just trying to add some detail and some color to this black and white painting, as you can see here. Um, it used to be black and white, so that was a bit of an experiment. I don't like love. I don't love the results of a hey Pramod, welcome to the stream. Um, I don't love the results of like how it's going. I think it needs a lot more work. I'm not quite sure about the workflow of that one. So to like, so we tried this one. I'm not super thrilled with it. I think it needs a lot more work. There's something kind of messy about the way the colors work out when you're working with like a watercolor piece and then trying to like mix in colors and brushes after the fact. Um, I'm not sure, I don't know if I love the look. Also I find, now that I'm looking at it, the greens are a bit acidic. So like, uh, just bear with me for a second. I think it's just a bit like oversaturated or something for my taste, but that already looks a little better. But so we were doing that, but now what we're going to do <laughs> is switch gears entirely. Uh, and we're going to continue using some of the brushes from the ED Film store because I, I'm trying to build a tutorial around how to use these brushes. And so I did this really quick um, concept painting um, in Photoshop. And I, I just, for it, I'll just, I don't know if any of you guys care. I just used this like hard round brush and worked really, really fast on, on sort of this like painting. Hey, Maria, welcome, welcome to the stream. Um, it's not a great painting by any means, um, it's, and it's not really meant to be. It's, it's kind of just a demo. I mean, I, 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 it took me longer than it should have, obviously, but uh, I just worked on it this morning for a couple hours. I'm trying to make something look okay. I'm really, again, I struggle with colors. Like I, I know a lot of people. But the point of this video <laughs> is to create these parts. So this thing that I made here was just using our store brushes. So I'm, I'm looking at the concept art, and what I'm trying to do is, is build what would eventually be like animated layers for, for a, a more complicated scene, like if we were tracking in or something or planning on building something a little more elaborate. So while this, this could be cut up and be sort of used as a style for an animated film, my personal preferences are a little more around here with a little more detail and stuff like that. So I'm gonna show you how to use the brushes to create something like this. Hey, Hero Studio, um, welcome to the stream. Um, while this isn't perfect or finished in any way, it's it's just a little bit more resolved, obviously, than the concept painting underneath. So um, I've done this a million times. I think anyone who's followed the streams will will be like, oh, he's doing that thing again. But I got to record a tutorial and kind of get the workflow down um, for for other people to understand it as well that might be interested in, in getting the brushes. Um, I'm going to try to record the video as I stream. So let me know if anything weird happens or you can't hear me or something like that. Um, and we'll just get moving. So I'll just give you a quick breakdown of what I did so far is I'm just looking at the large masses and shapes and just trying to figure out my alphas. Like, so for instance, we've got this, this shape here. I'm just trying to create some interesting silhouettes, which is something I always do. And I also expanded just beyond the borders of the drawing so that I have more stuff to work with. Um, the, so let's just do one more of these, these funny little borders just so you can see how it's done. Essentially, I'm, I'm kind of looking at, okay, this is like this snowy edge, but there's mossy stuff here somewhere. And then there's like rocky things and stuff like that. So I'm gonna kind of create just a rough shape and then I'll just do a solid fill for now. Um, and we'll kind of use, we'll use the colors that are sort of in here for now. And I'm going to do another one. And this is what's so weird and different about when you're working on art for animation or like backgrounds that are going to be animated is it's, it is not nearly as simple as doing a painting such as this, this kind of gross painting I've got here. It's, um, it's actually very hard because you can't work with one piece. You can't jump around all over the place and, and sort of work it and resolve it as you go. So because of that, you tend to like lose your ability to be creative and just sort of, and sort of flow. And that can, that can show in the artwork. But so this is why I think 
I haven't really done this before using the, the round circle brush, but this is why I think it's good to sort of establish some kind of a concept before you start trying to build your layers. I've done it where I just start building layers right away and it doesn't tend to work in my favor very well. So that's another layer there. And I probably would eventually, we'll just put this in for now, but this would be like a, a hill layer. This has to merge with the ground at some point. Um, and if we're going to be tracking or um, tr tracking the camera in, we're going to be revealing these layers are going to pull back a little bit, right? So it'll, it'll, these will be pulling away, revealing the ground and stuff like that. So we kind of have to think of what our structure of the shot's going to be if we're doing something like this. So tracking shot, it's a little different, but it's you still have to think of this stuff. So we have this area where the water is coming in, and this would probably be best as some kind of a plane, like a flat shape. But I can do some things to help block that and break it up, and that's what I'm just doing here. I'm just creating this little, little shelf hill thing. So we'll fill this one in. And right now it's green. Sometimes if, if it's in the way of the color sample, I'll just turn it off and just grab sort of the co rough color here and put it there. It's way too light. Let's just grab one of the more in the shadow colors because we'll... Okay, so that's like the snowy thing. So that's kind of what I'm doing. Uh, hey, Arun. Arun, I don't know how to say your name. Sorry. Um, so the next step is this layer here and here. So this... This one's probably, well, this one's, they're going to be a mix of mossy stuff. Like there's some mossy stuff, rocks and snow. I'm not really sure. I have some creative freedom I can take here. I don't love like this shape is too repetitive. But uh, so usually what I'll do is I'll come back in and kind of mess things around a little bit to make them, the shapes a little less conventional or a little less uh, patterned so that they feel the same. Like you notice how I've got this up and down, up and down. And it's all the same every time. That can happen really unconsciously, but we're going to we're going to work around that. So, let's take this in the if you look in the actual ED Films uh, Nature Make a Pack, grab the there's a mossy clump brush here. I use this thing a lot. We used it yesterday. We'll use it again. Just gonna make this nice and small, and I'm just gonna go in here and I'm just imagining that there's probably little bits of moss and stuff on here, and um, let's like let's just group all these together so I can turn them on and off faster to reference the underpainting. Actually, and we don't need this big guy on right right now. We're working on these little foreground ones. So I'm imagining there might be like little bits of moss and stuff, although this one's quite a bit further ahead, so it might be more rock. But let's just put a little on just for fun. And on this one, we'll put some on too. So I'm just clicking on the alpha channel and painting right on the alpha channel right here. So I'm imagining these are kind of like little foreground elements to some degree. Um, are they are these pieces as close as these ones? No, these ones are very close. So this one, the the mossy bits should be a bit smaller, depending on what we're doing. Um, so I'm just going to throw in a little bit. I want to. This is largely rocky, so we'll just have a little bit of moss, and I'll just like end it up here. There we go. That's fine. Okay, and then we'll take the texture brush, which is up here at the top, and we'll just peel off some. We'll add or peel off some little lumps and stuff like that, which will be our rocks. And I kind of want my rocks to have like a little bit of a softer edge to them. I don't want them to be hard like the lasso tool. I don't like the look of that very much. Um, let's just put on our gray, f or we do have our gray on, so we'll just do that. And we can just turn this guy off so we can really see what we're doing with our silhouette. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's turn this green one off right here. Boom. Okay, great. So essentially we do this, and then I'm going to just add like a little bit uh, more moss. Oops, that's a leafy one. Here we go. This is just to establish. So again, we're establishing our silhouette. And I think I've say said this a million billion times, but I don't find semi-transparent silhouettes work very well. So let's just do something really quick. So I set my flow down to 60. This might look cool to your brain. Like if you do something like this, I'm pressing it really soft, and then I'm pressing it harder. So you create this like nice feeling of, of, the, of the depth and the shape. What happens with something like this, as soon as you start animating, what you're going to see is once this foreground layer is moving, you're going to see through it in a very specific way. So this may look nice as a still because of the rules of painting and the blending and stuff like that. But as soon as it's moving, it starts to reveal the trick of how this depth is created, that roundness, and it won't feel round anymore. 
So this is why for a lot of animated layers and things when I'm working on stuff, I create really hard silhouettes. Unless there's like specifics. Like let's say if I wanted to have like little moss buds coming up, it's okay if those are a little transparent or a little less opaque. But the reality is, is the more, the more transparent something is, like if I do stuff like this, as soon as it's moving, it's going to look bad and it's going to completely break the illusion of what you're doing, at least for, at least for me and in, in the way I work. So it's not really beneficial for me to have nice transparent layers. It's beneficial to have really hard, strong silhouettes and then I paint my differences with lighting and stuff like that. And then that tends to make it hold together better once the camera's really moving. And it's something that took me a long time to figure out and learn. And I'm just trying to pass it off to you. Okay, so here we're just painting more of this silhouette. I've done this so many times. I'm sure you guys are just utterly sick of it. Um, I don't need foliage. Actually, this one's pretty sweet here. The foliage matte A. This can be good for like just adding like little bits of greenery like that. Because it also has like this long thing here. So you can kind of do this with it. But then... For the for 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 like low ground ground cover stuff, it can be pretty good. It's a little hard to control because it's so big, but it's nice to have a bit of an unpredictability to it too. I kind of enjoy it. So there's a little couple green things. We're gonna cover a bit of these with snow anyways, but it's kind of fun to have them to work with and play with. Boop. Oh, that's too big. Let's just do. Oh, I got these leaves. Those are massive. We don't need anything like that. Let's do. There's a moss bud thing. This is a cool this is a cool brush for like making little moss plants. We have so many of them. I got these for like that's really like crazy stuff. We'll do that later, but all those guys are intense. We don't need that. And then I have these micro plant brushes for creating really elaborate plants, which we can we can always add later. Um But that's not what we're doing right now. So there. Okay, that's kind of interesting. So we've got a couple little interesting things going on. It kind of looks like limbo. So how can we take that and get it to something like this? Uh, this Again, this isn't perfect, but it's getting closer. And it's pretty quick. So I'm going to show you the process here. The only thing I have to do really quick before we do that is just polish up these rocks a little bit. I'm going to throw a couple little things here and there. I'm kind of imagining this is like this scene is it's snowed. It's like the first early snow or something like that. Um, okay, let's grab our texture brush. So there's still greenery around because I, I kind of wanted a little bit of green. I'm not, you know, don't want it to be a complete desolate wasteland as it is snowing in Montreal right now. And I'm not really super enjoying the idea of the snow right now. It came a month early this year. We have an extra 30 days of coldness and wetness and wearing snowsuits. Okay, I'm going to put the flow up a little bit on this so it's a bit harder edged. There we go. So you can see this is really good for rocks and stuff like that. And we can always modify the silhouette later. That's the nice thing about it is there will be folders that contain our painting um, so that we'll be able to do a ton of stuff around it. There we go. Cool. Got some rocks, got some stuff. Not sure if these are nice rocks or not. We don't even know. Who knows? Maybe just get a nice little edge on this one. Cool. Bring that out just a bit. All right. I don't even know what I'm doing. Just, I'm just drawing. Who cares? Okay. So that's done. That's done. And we have that one and this one. So we'll start with this one because I already have a flow for, for these colors specifically and this kind of green foreground stuff. Um, the other one is a bit more unpredictable, which always makes me nervous. But let's just work on this. So what we have is I've made two layers, which could have been one layer. It can be one layer. It depends on how crazy you want to get. I tend to get really crazy with layers, and I, I regret it later because it's so much work. But I'll move this one over here just a little bit so we have a good reference to work with of what this is behind. So I'm going to show you how to the, the way I like to work for these layers. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to add a new layer. And I also took the sample painting here and made a small one so I can reference my lights and darks more easily. Um, so we're going to grab the texture painter brush and we'll use that to start with. And we're just going to block in some values really quick. We'll put it to about 50%. And I'm just going to block in as fast as I can without overly thinking about it. 
um, some of my lights and darks. Now, I'm probably a little bit green, a little limey um, for this shot because it's like it is winter um, and the light's quite cool. But I am avoiding really warm, really warm greens and yellows, which I might do on sort of like a uh, if it was more of a summer scene. So I'm trying to stay in the cool realm with my mosses and stuff like that. And so now I'm just grabbing the more of a bluish green. And this is kind of like closer to the camera. Now this layer here, this bottom layer, I didn't really work this foreground stuff because we're not going to see it. This layer, unfortunately, we have to do a little more foreground work because it's going to be visible to a degree. But we, could, we can crush it out and get it pretty dark because in the shot, we've got it pretty dark. Could it also be an additional layer. Like if you wanted to go nuts, you could add like another layer to it. So um, I'm not going crazy realistic on my lighting here. I, I am imagining that maybe there's some kind of a tree blocking this, which is why it's so dark. This corner is so dark here. I'm kind of imagining there might be some big tree over here or, you know, it's out of the light somehow. And for some reason, you know, we don't know, but it's just to help frame everything. And I, and really it should be, it might be lit and there might be way more bounce light hitting it, but we've got it quite dark. So there must be something occluding the light from, from the actual little patch here. Okay. And so we'll just turn this off for a second. Uh, I just want to have a better sense of what I'm doing. I like to put like a neutral gray underneath because first off, it doesn't influence my color choices too badly. And secondly, uh, it gives, it makes, I can see if I'm making any problems with my alphas or my, if, if my colors are, or my contrast is too high or not high enough. Okay. So this is a pretty cool brush. Now I feel like we should be darker up here since this is more vertical and down in this area, we should be lighter since it's a little more skyward facing. We can warm up a little bit because it's just kind of going to be in some sunlight here. Oops, it's a little too light. There we go. We're just warming up a bit. And then these guys are going to be our rocks. Now with rocks, I always struggle. Like what should they be brown or gray? Like, blah, who knows? You never know. I decided for, for just by accident to make them kind of a grayish color. Oh, and I see something I want to fix really quick here. There's always something I want to fix. It's going to lighten this corner up there. It's annoying me a little bit. Okay, so let's we'll kind of make them like a neutral bluish gray. Mostly because if I'm imagining they're kind of grayish rocks anyways, they're going to be picking up um, mostly the color of the sky. So they would kind of be in that bluish realm. So we'll start them a little bit darker. And just paint this in. Paint it in pretty hard. And... It's okay. It probably should have, I probably should have started darker. So I did put it on a separate layer so I can just delete this off. We'll start dark. And I'm just kind of, I'm going to find this rock. I get, maybe it's big, maybe it's small. Who knows? It doesn't have to be, um, it could go all the way to here, right? We don't know. We can, we can experiment. Okay. And then we'll just bring this like this before we get too far. Again, just blocking it in. Okay. There we go. And then let's get that list there like that. Okay, and then there's another little bit of rock here. And I didn't like plan these rocks other than I, when I was doing my alpha, I just, you know, didn't decided not to put moss there. So it's kind of still like a, a discovery process, which is pretty fun. Okay. And so like also in the painting, the sunlight's kind of low, so it's going to ra do a kind of like this radial thing out. So we're going to hit, it's going to be lighting along these edges here. It's going to be like there, a um, little bit around here. We'll probably get little shadows wherever the light can't go. So like somewhere like here. And don't forget, like unless there's something completely blocking everything, we might get a little spillover of light here. Or if it's really just getting ambient shade here or ambient light, we might just have something like this. Okay, so now we've kind of blocked it in. Um, this one could probably be a little darker, but see how cool this like texture brush is. It's so, I did some tweaking on it. So it's got like some nice, a little nice stuff to it. A little, if you just tap it and it's quite large and it's fast, you just tap it. You get a lot of texture right out of the gate. So there we go. Um, so now, oh, we missed a rock. Let's just put this guy here. This one should be pretty bright. 
Now, this is a very specific look. You may hate this look, um, that's, and that's okay. Uh, you don't have to use these brushes this way. Like, just like we did the other day, we used it for this thing. So this is a more watercolor look. Today, we're going to do this feeling. Okay, and I'm just going to grab this guy. It's got a little blue there. Okay, there we go. All right, so now what? What's, what how can we achieve an even more interesting look? Mm, let's get this here. And don't forget, too, as moss isn't just one color, so you can always come back in, too, and add some, like, you know, add some little little flourishes and, and blots of color here and there. I would really strongly recommend that. So if we were just really quick, so I know I'm jumping everywhere, but this is how, this is how painting is just, you know, I find I do this in painting all the time, is you'll jump all over the place. And you should, because you need to experiment and see things and feel them. But you notice I've thrown in, like, little bits of, of orange and... This would be like some purple or whatever. It may not be appropriate for the actual painting. It might have to be a lot more desaturated, but we can do it. So, so don't forget to, to add color wherever you can. Even if it's not natural and it doesn't make any sense, it might just look cool and help bring the painting out a bit more. Um, but anyways, so before we move on, so I've done this, like I've blocked this in. I kind of have a sense of it. Uh, I, I might like, let's zoom out a little bit and get sort of the bird's eye view of this. And when, if I'm not sure about a decision I'm going to make, I just add a new layer. You can always, you don't have to. Some people don't use layers at all and they just like paint. I admire those people. Um, I'm way more cautious. Um, this could probably be a little bit, feels like it needs to be lighter and here. Something about that feels like it's too flat. Okay. Turn it down a bit. All right. Now, so we've done this. So the next step is I want to create like a little, a little um, stencil for myself. So I've done one already, but I'll show you how to make it. It's, it's the worst color in the world. It's v very visually offensive, but that's okay. Um, we, you don't have to have it red like this. You can make it black, but I'll show you how to make one of these. And I use these all the time. So anyone who's familiar with my process, again, you're going to be like, oh, God, dude, come on, man. Do we have to go through this again, but it's okay. You're, you, you know, other people need to see it too. So... I'm going to grab the mossy clump since we're working kind of on a mossy area. And we can just use black if we want. And let's just turn off the concept painting for now. Where are you? I know it's on top of everything, actually. And okay, so we're going to make a little stencil that we can refer to that's sort of like this. And this is going to be like our little detailer. Um, and because it's close, we're going to make this one a little more, a little bigger. So I usually make them kind of like just an oblong shape. And I'll come in after and sort of I'll, I'll create a mask out of it and I'll, I'll delete this, you know, if there's weird parts in it, like holes and stuff, you can clean it up. Okay, so we start like this, create like a couple of areas of variety. Okay. And this one can be a little faded because we're not using this for, um, for alphas. We're using this for detailing inside of the painting. Okay, so... Um, they don't they don't have to be 100% opaque. In fact, they're better in some ways if they're not Because you can do a little bit more you'll get a little more variety out of them. Okay, so now the next thing is like let's throw in some little buds here and there We're essentially creating like a little patch of earth that we can use to detail up our painting There we go Okay, I have a couple of those. Now let's throw in a, a couple little bee buds. Those are a little different. The name of the game in the, is at least in the nature kit, um, the uh, nature mega, mega pack is just variety. Lots and lots and lots of variety. Okay, so we've got this, got these little leafy things here we could put in there. I might put these at 100% opaque. These might be like little... Oops, little tiny plants going out. It's always crazy when you look close to the surface of, of the earth how much stuff is going on. Okay, so for these, these ones kind of sit straight up like that, so I need to go to the brush option here. They, they should probably be tilted, but they're not. Um, and what I can do here is shape dynamics, and I can just, I can turn on like um, pen tilt, and that makes it so I can kind of orient them. There we go. Let's up, 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 up. Well, these I'll just go to the tip and then flip it over like that. 
because we need to do the other side. I suppose I could just rotate the, the Photoshop canvas as well. There we go. Okay, and is there anything else we want to use? Well, we got lots of little plants and stuff like that, but um, that's pretty good. I don't know. I think we need too many more. I've got ferns and stuff. I'm not really sure if we want to use ferns, but we could. Anyways, I think that's pretty good. Um, no, I haven't. Uh, Hero, I haven't. Have you checked the new 3D channel extract with After? No, I haven't. I've never, I've not done it yet at all. Um, I, but that's amazing because it's very helpful. We need that constantly in our work. Um, haven't tried it, but thank you for, yes, I will try it for sure. Okay, so that to say, um, do you like it? Have you played with it? We now have these like two little stencil maps, which are great. I can use them. So I, all I'm doing is I'm control clicking the thumbnail. And now what I'm going to do is we're going to, let's just turn this one off for now because I don't want to be distracted at the moment. And then we're going to create a new layer. We'll go select, transform selection. We'll just bring this in here, kind of position it maybe the way we want. And the first thing I'm going to do maybe is I'm going to invert it by pressing control shift I. Let's get back our texture brush, which I use for everything. And I'm just going to get a little darkness in there and just go like this. Cool. Some dark, great, very happy there. And then in here, we might even go a little darker and bluer. Let's do that, just do some right here. Cool, okay. Now if I deselect it, you'll see what we got is we have some nice little details popping in. Okay, um, and let's, well, we can reselect it or um, just grab it again. Because this time I don't want it inverted. The thing is if you invert and you go like this and you go control, sh uh, if you go control shift I, and then you go control shift I again, you'll lose that edge. Hey. Yeah, I am. But what's up? I'll, I'll be out in a second. Um, okay, so da, 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 da. let's go like this. I'm going to have to stop soon, guys. Sorry. I always have to stop. Um, okay, let's do this. But I, I want to finish this layer with you at least. Okay. So we've got it here. I'm going to add like a nice little light, kind of a greenish color here. So maybe this section is picking up a little bit of light here. Doing it on a slight, on a different layer. There we go. Let's pull this down a bit. And just maybe this one will be kind of a coolish color. These will be more gray and here, but still light. Let's put the opacity to 50% because I feel like it's a bit too strong. Okay, cool. I'm just tapping. So you can see like we're getting some nice, nice details popping in here now for this foreground piece. All right, so let's, uh, let's, we can go control shift D to select it up again. Bring it up here. This one will be kind of like, we'll do this one as a side piece maybe. Okay, maybe for this one, we will go, well, you know what we could do for this is we'll go, we'll take this green, we'll kind of lighten it up, keep it, try to keep it a bit cool. We'll go like this first, just lightly tapping, kind of grabbing it out, and then we can invert it and then grab some of this dark here, just alt-clicking and grabbing the dark, and then just pushing that down a little bit, and then we could put, just push the highlight on that, on this one a little more up here. So we're not going to finish this whole background. There's no way. It'll take way too long. Um, but I'm just trying to, sh again, like I just want to show you the method. And let's go back here. I might tone this down just a little bit. It's a bit too bright. Cool. So we're starting to get a lot of, a lot of really cool details. Um, oh, yeah, I, I broke it. So let's click it again over here. It's like, I wish there was a button for transform selections. So this is a bit of under moss stuff. So let's put it down like this. We're going to grab this here. And I'm going to grab some of this light stuff here. And just put it here. Cool. And then let's cool it off a lot down here. And this is a little bit of cool lightness here. And we can we'll go select transform selection. Do a little more even. Those little belly things aren't quite working um, for 
upside down moss. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but they're pretty easy just to erase them off if we want to. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, I got my textured eraser back. I lost it. I kind of hate sometimes how Photoshop has, you gotta, it's now does this thing where it automatically selects the brush. There's a brush association. Anyways, it doesn't matter. I'm just getting rid of some of those little belly things. Okay, um, next thing, let's, let's grab it again. Me sorry, okay, oh, I lost it, where is it? There it is. Okay, and then we'll go back here, transform selection, bring it back down. Now, I just wanna get a little more foreground detail here. So let's go here. We wanna get some nice stuff here. And for this one, we're gonna come in on top of the rock a little bit with some greens. We'll do that a little here. And then in the shadowed area, we'll do like a really cool kind of color like that, like a dark. That's probably too saturated. Yeah, let's do that. There we go. Do the same thing over here. Kill that down a little bit. Cool. See that? Great. So that starts kind of, we can start blocking, like fleshing all of this out like that. Um, and now I'm just going to show you really quick. Well, let's, we just want to do one more little thing because we've got this rock edge. I'm going to grab this other guy that I did. So I'm just control clicking that layer. Select transform selection. Move this down over here. And here I'm just going to put like a one more little edge. Hmm, what kind of a rounded edge? Grab this like that maybe. And we'll grab sort of like this color. We'll just put it in for now. Just to be over top of the rock area. Okay. So now uh, what I'm going to do is we're going to, I'll just show you how to do a rock really quickly. Um, using, we have the rock packs like that are part of this. So there's these rocks here. It's called like builder rocks. And the way you can use these is to create accents or like full rocks. I mean, you can do a lot of stuff with it. But, um, so I'm just gonna click here. Let's just take, we'll turn on the concept art again because we wanna take sort of the light of the sky and we can put it on the edge of these rocks like that. So maybe let's move a little bit off there like, like this. So we're just outside the edge. You see how that works? And then we can just erase it off. And it gives us some nice texture to work with, which is cool. And then if you want, I have negative rocks. I have positive and negative rocks. It really depends what you're doing, but the, the plus ones are like the inverse. So for this, I'd want to use a darker color. So I might go here and I pop that in like that. So let me just make sure we have an explicitly rock layer. I'm gonna grab this and we'll just push it down a bit. We'll go like that. That's not dark enough. It's a little too green. Cool. So then I can just kind of erase this off and then we've got this like nice little rock thing happening. Do the same for these guys. I've made a whole ton of them. So you do have, there is quite a bit of flexibility. So we're going to be looking at positive rocks. So this one's a lot rounder. They're very large brush. They can be very large brushes and very small. So you sort of pick the ones you want and then you erase them away like that. And then, so if I wanted to do a highlight on this one, I would grab a negative rock. So here, and I could either create a new layer just and then just pick the light color that I want. So let's just grab a sky color and go like this, punk. Maybe it's too opaque, like who knows? I don't know. And I can just erase this off. The other option is, is that you can create a little quick, a quick mask. Um, there's lots of ways you can do this, but this is the way I've been doing it. So we'll go here. This one's too, I want a longer one like that. Cool. That's a, is that a negative? Yeah. And I don't want it so bright. We'll do it like that. And I'm probably going to just select in here just so I'm not putting it everywhere. There we go. And they automatically flip for you. So you're not going to get the same pattern over and over again. So let's just erase this off. This is too much. We don't want all that detail. Great. It's probably a little bright. And I'll do one more little bit here. Bonk. It's way too bright. Put it to 50%. Put it to 30. I don't like how it's. I'm going to go like that. Cool. 
and we can just erase this off and do whatever and then we just need some darkness so I'll grab the positive go darker want to go darker than what we have so let's go in here there that looks pretty cool cool eh it's pretty fun um it's a fast way to paint really nice rocks and we can do this all over the place like we can just grab you know let's grab a positive of this let's do a d one let's do this what does what does the d look like and this one will just kind of go a grayish green let's see I don't know. It's probably not not a good color. Oh, it's the wrong. It's a, we need the D minus. There we go. That's for like little highlight ones. See, so maybe we want like a little rock in there that's kind of just sitting in here. Bonk. Cool. Done. There. And if we want to adjust it a little bit, we can just put this on it, and we can just use like our go back to our texture brush, up here. Boop. Go in here and just like either green it up a little bit or maybe it's, you know, maybe it's too purple or it's got not enough green in it because it should be getting a lot of green from the environment. Who knows? There we go. Cool. So I, I, I don't know if that like helps, but if, I don't know if that makes sense, but that's kind of the workflow for the rocks and the moss. And then obviously you can come back in after with the brushes and start adding like little custom details, you know, like if you want Let's say we want something that's kind of orange and whatever. Can literally just make it pretty strong. Let me just go like this. Like we could add like weird little plants really quick. And then just have the have the layers transparency locked. And then use this. So we want to make that darker. And then we can just kind of paint on it like that. And sort of figure it out. But anyways. They're, they're very, it's actually pretty robust. So I haven't added any purple or anything in here, but usually my next step is to add some like purples and like different colors to, to pull out the details. But you can see it's it's already working. It's blending nicely. I don't like all that. I added a lot of colors to that by accident. Not sure. If, anyways, it doesn't matter. We'll fix it up later. But um, um, that's yeah. So now what you, you can see is that these layers will now kind of move and merge together nicely. And then, you know, they don't match the light value that we need. But the cool thing is, is once we're done, it's no problem at all. We can just uh, use an adjustment layer or whatever to to actually modify it. So we'll do a curves or something. Hold click there and then we can bring it up and down. And then we can also if we need it really dark like this. Just go here with your texture brush. And then erase off with our black. Just paint off the, the adjustment layer. Cool. Now we have this kind of like, we've gotten it back to the, the light value that it needs. But it looks pretty sweet, if you ask me. Like, so we've gone from this very, this very kind of rough look here to something a lot more fleshed out. And eventually we'll need to add snow and stuff to it. Um, one thing I guess like I'll do just really quick if we were going to add snow to we'll just do the snow on this one, for instance. But I'd probably do here as I'd probably do it on top of everything. I wouldn't try to paint it inside. So we do it here. I'm not really I'm not a master of snow, but we'll make the snow a little bit like darker for now. We'll do the dark part of the snow first. So if we wanted little patches of snow to do, 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 let's just do that. And then we'll kind of bulb it out a little bit. And then what we can do is we can take this guy here, or whatever one we want, transform it. And if we want it, we could just delete it off the snow. Or make an alpha channel. You know, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Just delete that off. Maybe maybe actually just use we'll use our eraser so that we're only pulling off specific spots. Great, so now we have that little snow patch and we can enable that. Then we can start painting the actual peeling of the snow. Um, put your brush with snow since it's softer. Keep your brush at about 50%. And there we go. Oops. 
it helps to definitely look at snow pictures, images of snow. Now, snow is going to usually be about roughly the color of the sky. It's not going to be a whole lot brighter than the sky, usually a bit darker. At least that's my understanding of it. And now when we're in these like little nooks here, we might get like nice and cool and possibly tinted a bit green because it's right, right close to the moss. Like there might be a slight greenish color to the snow. I know it looks like a smooth rock right now, which means we might need to brighten it up a little bit more. Definitely want to make sure there's a clear difference between the snow and your rocks, which would start to come through. Like the other option is that we darken off some of the rocks a little bit. Or we could warm the rocks up a little bit. But anyways, that's kind of how you do the snow. Could spatter it in a little more. And then it's just easy just to delete stuff off of it. But you can see like the fidelity you get out of it's pretty nice just using this technique of using these masks that you've made and then cutting it off. So it can work pretty well. Um, I'm going to delete that snow for now. But... Um, yeah, so I got to stop for a bit. Sorry, guys. It's always like one interruption after the other. Um, it's hard to stream when you're running the company. Um, let's go like this. Just going to lighten this up a little bit. But I think you can see that we generally have a lot of flexibility in this method, and it's quite polished. It almost has like the level of detail of like Tarzan or something, so it's a little ridiculous. Um, yeah, I'll be streaming tomorrow for sure. I'm, I'm here tomorrow as well. So don't worry, um, no, no, no troubles on the stream tomorrow so far that I'm aware of. Cool. Um, all right, so I might, you know, I'll keep working on this painting, I hope. It seems that whenever I start things, sometimes I just have to stop because gears shift and we have to change priorities. But that's like a, a quick overview. I mean, there's so many brushes in this thing. We have a rock builder, and then we have the tree builder, which is another cool one that I wanted to get into, um, which is pretty fun. We're, I was going to use it for this big tree here, but there's a whole bunch of um, brushes there that actually help you build trees. Um, so you can kind of build these like cool branches and stuff like that. And it gives you just a bit of texture to start with. You know, there's a whole bunch. We've got the trunks. So I've got the trunk pieces, and I stole this idea from from Aaron Blaze, like he had some really cool tree brushes. So I just had kind of added my own spin to them a little bit and just to get some cool roughness and edges because his didn't make the best, the best end points. Like if I wanted to have dead branches sticking out. So I made mine a little rougher and kind of tweak them a little bit. And then we got like all kinds of like little branches and stuff. They're super fun and cool, to, easy to use. And these operate, a lot of my brushes operate with tilt. So if you if you go like this, you can kind of let's put shift zero. So I'm doing it full opacity right now. Bonk. And then I can add more branches if I want just by making it smaller and tilting it a little bit. So you can kind of get some unique branch patterns so it doesn't always look the same. See? So that's pretty cool. Um, and I have a lot of them. So I made a bunch of branches that you could use on your trees. Now these ones aren't alpha. They're not as alpha. They're not alpha very well. So they're, they're kind of designed a little bit and painterly. Um, so if you wanted alpha ones, you, you could, you know, you could still use the same idea, but I probably should make some alpha ones. The other thing too, just so you guys know, if, if anyone, I'm not trying to sell, make, force you guys to buy brushes, but if you do end up buying the brushes, you will get the, any updates that we do the brushes for free. So if I start adding, if I add some things or I'm finding that, oh man, I need some more like better silhouette tree brushes, those you'll just, you'll get them. They'll just be updated and you'll be informed that we've updated the brushes and that you can get those for, you just get them. You just re-download the, download the brush pack. Um, so anyways, so um, yeah, okay. So I gotta go, I gotta go, but uh, I'll come back and you know, hopefully we can stream some more and do some stuff. I feel like just by playing with this, I need a couple of more like alpha brushes. Um, these ones are more for painterly trees. We need some good alpha trees. I have a few, like these branch ones are pretty good. They're pretty good for building little branches. But I think I could use a couple more. 
Anyways, okay, cool. So I gotta go. Uh, but thanks for hanging out, guys. I'll talk to you. Talk to you later. Um, thanks for hanging on the stream, and I'm going to stop streaming and stop recording. Bon, stop.